Your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us late on your Friday night. It's been absolutely gorgeous throughout the day. We saw some sunshine, which helped warm these temperatures up right around average for this time of year into the upper 60s. But as you can see on our satellite and radar right now, there is a small system that is making its way across our viewing area, bringing us some showers, even some lightning and thunderstorms, mainly in the Champaign region right now. But it won't be lasting too long here. But because of that cloud cover, man, things are are staying mild temperature wise into the 60s still in some areas such as Effingham, Mattoon, Paris, Decatur over in Springfield at 66 degrees, a little bit cooler in Champaign at 57, 56 in Pontiac and 55 in Watsika. And these temperatures are going to be on the rise as we head into our weekend with temperatures into the 80s. I will have all the details on that coming up. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. I was crying, kicking, trying to push him off me. She says she was assaulted three years ago on a college campus. Now she's sharing her story to help others. We have more details on the murder of a missing woman, how investigators say she died. Many are pushing for the state to fully reopen, why that might happen sooner for some parts over others. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Naturally, I let my rape define who I was. I allowed such a horrific experience to eat me alive. Years after this Eastern Illinois University alum says she was sexually assaulted by another student, she is sharing her story of life beyond the traumatizing experience. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. She put her experience into words by sharing a video online detailing what happened three years ago. Her goal is to bring awareness to the reality of sexual assaults on college campuses. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen has the story. April 29th, 2017 the night that changed my life. My name is Mallory Henderlong, and I am a survivor of sexual assault. A former EIU soccer player, Mallory Henderlong, gave her testimony of the night she says she was raped after a party the last weekend of her freshman year. In her YouTube video, she accused an EIU baseball player of sexually assaulting her. I was obviously intoxicated and knew it. I knew I needed to go back to my room and get some sleep. Seconds later, he picked me up, threw me over his shoulder and began jogging in the opposite direction of my dorm. He climbed up the stairs of his apartment, took me to his room where he raped me. During this time, I was crying, kicking, trying to push him off me. Soon after, she went to the school counselor and reported the rape to the university authorities. With the athletic director, police, and university president knowing, I expected the situation to be handled properly. It wasn't. I ended up transferring, and he ended up still playing baseball at EIU. Henderlong says she carried the trauma of that night with her long after it happened. I struggled with accepting that it wasn't my fault, that what I was wearing that night didn't matter, that even though I had consumed alcohol, didn't make it okay, that if I wouldn't have gone to that party, I wouldn't have been in that situation. If I would have just screamed no louder, maybe someone would have heard me. Maybe he would have gone off and out of me. After transferring schools to Spring Arbor University, she got support and found strength in faith. As my faith has gotten stronger and my relationship with Christ has grown, the way I allow this traumatizing experience to impact my daily life has been more positive than negative. Henderlong has not named the person who she says attacked her. She says the point of this video is to uplift others who have gone through the same thing. Reporting, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. EIU responded to our request for a statement. It, re it reads in part, quote, protecting our students is an utmost concern. Claims of sexual assault are taken very seriously at EIU and its athletic department. Though the severity of this circumstance makes it difficult to understand, as students, Ms. Henderlong and her alleged attacker have inherent privacy rights. For that reason, EIU is not able to comment on the matter other than it was brought to our attention on May 6, 2017. Investigators are revealing new information about the death of Kimberly Mattingly. She disappeared in early April and her body was found this week. Christopher Glass is charged with her murder. Aaron Kaiser charged with hiding it. The state's attorney says Glass and Mattingly had an on and off again relationship. 
Investigators say the two got into an argument and Glass shot her. They also say Kaiser helped Glass bury Mattingly on his parents' property in rural Beecher City. We have an update on a home invasion in Urbana. A 15-year-old suspect died in the hospital this morning. Police say Devontae Brown and two other teens tried breaking into a home on Tuesday. They say Brown threatened the homeowner with an unloaded gun and was put in a chokehold. He did not regain consciousness. The Champaign County State's attorney says the homeowner will not be charged. She says his actions are protected by law. In this situation, the resident, the victim of the crime of home invasion um, appropriately and uh, correctly defended himself under the terms of the law. And so really, um, he is the victim, not at all the offender. The other teens involved are being charged with home invasion and burglary. New at 10, Decatur police are investigating after a person was shot tonight. It happened near North Van Dyke and East Marietta Streets. Police say they were called to the scene and were told a gunshot victim had gone to the hospital. They say he's expected to survive. No word on any suspects. A wanted man is in custody after a police pursuit that crossed two cities. Our media partners at the Journal Gazette report the man wanted on an assault warrant in Tennessee was driving the wrong way on a one-way street in Charleston. When they tried to pull him over, they say he sped off and eventually out into farm fields. They say he stopped at the parking lot of the Douglas Hart Nature Center and ran away. He gave up when he saw a canine unit. Police have not released his name. The governor's modified stay-at-home order took effect today, and it was met by hundreds of protesters at the Capitol. This order includes requiring people to wear face coverings in public and allows for more businesses to open. But those gathered at the Capitol today want the state back to normal normal right now. Nurses were in Springfield to counter protest. The Illinois Nurses Association says they understand how difficult staying inside can be, but protesting in mass gatherings is not the right answer. Many of today's protesters in Springfield were not wearing masks. Governor Pritzker did open the door to reopening regions of the state before the end of the month, but there's a key condition. He said if a hospital region sees a decline in risk factors for 14 straight days, he could move to reopen in that region before the rest of the state. That would mean seeing declining infection rates and ICU occupancy. You know, if it's 14 days on a downslide, right, of those numbers, then absolutely it's, listen, I want as much as everybody else does for everybody to get back to work and for us to move toward normalcy. But I also want to say that I'm not going to do it until we know people are safe and it isn't going to be because some protester has a sign that says, you know, liberate Illinois. The 14-day time frame is in line with guidance from the Trump administration and the CDC. Here's a follow-up for you. The Logan County Sheriff laid out what his department will and will not be doing to enforce this order. He says deputies will not respond to calls or arrest people for not wearing face coverings in public, but if someone violates state statute, that will warrant police intervention. So, for example, if someone is not wearing a mask in a business and the business owner asks them to leave and that person refuses, that would be a violation and that person could be arrested for criminal trespass. In Springfield, the police chief says he's relying on retailers to enforce that face covering requirement. Businesses do have the right to refuse service. Managers at Ace Hardware on Walnut in the capital city say most people have followed this order so far. I would say 95% of people have. Um, we have had a few people that have come in with no mask and you know we've asked them to put it on. They say they don't have one. We have had a, a couple people that um, have given a little bit of backlash to it, but you know we're we're doing okay with it. She says they won't kick people out of the store unless they become unruly about that requirement. One city council was considering a fine for people not wearing masks, but not anymore. Decatur City Council members were supposed to vote on a new rule that would give a ticket of up to $500, but council got a lot of negative feedback about that idea, so the new fine was taken off of their agenda. Now we'll look at the numbers and some good news from one Champaign County nursing home. There are no new cases of coronavirus at Clark Lindsay Village 
in Urbana. They reported a positive case of coronavirus earlier this week, so all other residents and employees at the Meadowbrook Health Center were tested, and all results came back negative. Statewide, there are over 3,100 new cases, so there are now over 56,000 total in 97 counties in Illinois. 105 more people have died from COVID-19 in the state. That makes more than 2,400 deaths across Illinois. Other things besides businesses are now open. What had some up bright and early. Plus, some pet owners have a hard time being separated from their animals when they're at the vet. How one clinic came up with a social distancing solution. And one athlete season did not end the way she expected it, but this time, COVID-19 is not to blame.